Hey, 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 Gianluca, how are you? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, just perfect, actually. Yeah, perfect. Ah, hi. Sorry, I was trying to understand how invitation work in this code. <laughs> well, apparently, so from, from what I've heard is that it's not as uh, intuitive as, well, you yeah. might expect. Yeah. Yeah, there's some kind of latency and then like some banner comes up, which is very visible, but also highly ignorable. So in any case, <laughs> hi, we're here. We're here. That's Thank a great thing. Thank you for thing. inviting me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no worries. Thanks so much for uh, for joining on such short notice. Ah, um, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so we still have two minutes until the actual formal show starts. We already have some people in the audience who are listening in. Um, if you're okay, Gianluca, I'd like to record this uh, as well oh, to put sure, up on sure. the uh, YouTube channel later on. Um, seems dangerous enough. Yes, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me easy questions. Then. I'll do that. No worries. No worries. <laughs> As I said, this is just going to be very, very informal, very, very, very uh, relaxed. Uh, but it's then up to the uh, audience to start asking the uh, the tough questions. So uh... <laughs> we'll just see. We'll just see. So um, yeah, perfect. So I've got the recording is going already. That's great. And then I'll, uh, as I said, I'll probably just have that on the channel later on uh, this week and make sure that you have access to it as well. Um, oh, that's great, thanks. Yeah, no worries, no worries. So let's wait until the top of the hour, just give some people some the chance to join. Here we go. Do you have, a, are you all set? Do you have something to drink? Everything set or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all fine. <laughs> okay, <you>. great. <laughs> yeah, for you, yeah. of course. You, well, what, you're you're in the UK, of course. So for you, it's just nine actually, nine p.m. Oh, you're in? No, I'm in Italy right now. You're in Italy right yeah. now. Oh, that's great. Yes. So you're in the same same time zone. That's always a good thing. Exactly. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I was actually at the summit last weekend. I mm -hmm. it was quite an impressive, impressive things because he was hosted at the Muse Museo del Sint Marchigiano, which is the museum of you know all the Italian scents that were produced in that region. It's, oh, wow. It was really impressive. Yeah. It's, oh, that's it's great. Like, yeah, I, I, I will post some links later on. There's, there's just like an incredible, incredible tradition and history about synthesizer in Italy, which was almost unknown and they're just great. And they have like, you know, a long history because that was the region that, you know, was producing music and instruments for centuries. So it's, it's just mm -hmm. like something, it was really amazing. But yeah, yeah so, I'm so, so how that. did that actually start, uh, the whole synthesizer? Because I've, I've, I've read a bit about that, the Italian, well, well, the regional yeah. synthesizer cultures that there was there. But when yeah. did that actually start? Well, I, so I'm not an expert, so I shouldn't be say this on record. <laughs> no but worries. There you go. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, well, my understanding was that there was already a, a very flourishing economy in the area based mostly on the accordion and other instruments like organs. Mm -hmm. And by my understanding in the 50s and the 60s, you know, they realized that the market was shifting. The market was shifting towards like more modern instruments. So the same people that were producing this classical instruments decided to go all the way into the new century. So they start producing, you know, electrical organ and synthesizer as well. You know, but the you know, so far FISA and all the big companies, I mean you should ask them for Yeah them. of course no but that, that's, do, that's that still on my list as well, yeah. Like, it's a, yeah, you definitely should. And it's it's quite impressive because then, you know, in the sixties and the seventies, you know, that the amount of synthesizer were produced in such a you know a chaotic and great environment to the to the point that even to this day they're discovering new synths that they will produce mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's you know by the late 90s i think uh, things start to shift towards the bad and i think by the early 2000s you know they all of them followed the general italian economy into failure Mm -hmm. but the truth is there's a lot of stuff still going on there's a lot of know-how Engineering. There is a lot of companies still that are that are there. It's 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 a very it was a very exciting thing for an Italian to see all of this. So I yeah, imagine, no, yeah. It's, uh, I I would suggest anyone to just search for the Museo del Saint 
But I repeat, I'm no expert. I just once found myself <laughs> in an amazing room full of amazing stuff. And I said, wow, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at. And yet I know it's beautiful. So yeah, it was quite amazing. And then, you know, the summit and all the presentation. It was very interesting because it was... So who was, first... who was presenting, you said? Well, I I introduced them at GIDA. So there was a panel. It was mm -hmm. So the, the talks are all online, but you might require some Italian. Mm -hmm. And it was it was actually very interesting for me because you know I started MRG on lockdown and I started selling synths on lockdown and yeah, signing yeah. synths on lockdown. And this was the first time I went to do something in real life. This is essentially the second time I'm speaking to a human being about synthesizers. <laughs> and you know it was impressive to see that something that started in my room during lockdown and all that you know. That tension and boredom that lockdown brought to you, yeah, well, you know, had real effect in real life, and I met a lot of incredible, amazing people. So it was very exciting. So yes, I introduced MRG. There was a panel with, you know, other Italian startups that are doing hardware and software like Fase Lunare and Appesoft, and we all talk about what it's like to start mm -hmm. synthesizer and you know, yeah, synthesizer businesses in 2020, which was very interesting. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that that's that's a nice segue actually into, of course, the uh, the story that I've already heard from you, of course, is and that that's and you already alluded to it. So how you actually got started creating uh, your rec yeah. modules? That was all during lockdown, right? You were in the UK. Yes. You were you were in your, your 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 room, and you thought, well, yeah. you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to become a Eurorack maker. Exactly. Even more, I'm going to discover what Eurorack is. Well, so here's the here's the story. I remember back in 2013, probably 2014, 2015. Now 2014 maximum. Uh, you know, during I was, you know, I absolutely had, you know, this is a bad thing to say, but I had zero knowledge of what a synthesizer was mm -hmm. until then. I mean, even like music wise, I. But like I, I remember watching on Netflix, you know, I Dream of Wires, and. Mm -hmm. I remember that my reaction, to, I don't know if you see that the documentary, is kind of like a staple of, you know, modular synth. And I remember watching it, I, I realized, wow, actually synthesizers are interesting because my idea of synthesizer at the time was not exactly that, you know, it was an interesting documentary. It, he had this strange, like, you know, epic, Mm -hmm. the triumphalistic epics into the modular, but you know, it, it gets you into it. I say, wow, this must be an interesting world. And it stayed in the back of my mind for a while. And then, you know, work and life hit on at the time. And then, yeah, so the, the, the fun story is that I was living in London and then in February, 20, in February 2020, I decided for the, to move to Cambridge for mm -hmm. the third time in my life because I was tired of working from home and I wanted to work in the office. <laughs> so that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work well because the moment I moved, the next day, you know, the whole thing started in Italy and, you know, the lockdown started all across Europe. Yeah. And I found myself in a new house with boxes everywhere. And, you know, of course, like I was, you know, I decided to take the smallest room and make it my study because, you know, I was going to be in the office anyway, right? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I then packed all my electronic stuff and my stuff and start living in this room. And I was staring at the computer to meet my friends, to speak to my to my friends, to to work. They say I need to do something off the computer. And so, of course, like I turned myself and I saw an oscilloscope and my, you know, soldering station. I said, well, you know what? It's time I pick, pick, pick back up electronics because, you know, I studied electronics at university and it was my, mainly electronics. Then I start working immediately, you know, in Palo Alto in the Silicon Valley as a software engineer. So I could never use my my knowledge of electronics. So, you know, I pick up, you know, the art of electronics, the big books, and I start reading it again. And I realized that I didn't like it. <laughs> and then, you know, you remember the synthesizer, the thing that you say, let's try to build one. And that's how it started. And yeah. Yeah, so it started very quickly. So in you know, February, I moved. By <laughs> beginning of March, I almost unboxed 90% of the boxes. 10% mm -hmm. is still there. <laughs> and, <laughs> as uh, it should. <laughs> as it happened, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you don't use it the first month in a new house, you don't really need it. Then you'll never uh, do it anyway, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You'll bring it to the next move. 
and uh, and so yeah and i was and, you know so i stopped doing stuff so by march you know i stopped doing this i said okay let's let's get back into electronics by april i start buying synthesizer and i realized how expensive it is so you know yep. <laughs> I, I you know by the time the first credit card statement that i said okay yeah. <laughs> i need to control something here so <laughs> so i decided yeah okay so i decided to start building stuff and i yeah, so I remember building the first the first module, the first two modules, which was the yeah, DSN and VCO, because I had like already a VCI. I hired a, I bought an amazing um, what what was it, the Pittsburgh System Ten Plus. I found it on eBay, so I said that was great. And so I started building modules to connect to it. So I, I. Yeah, I built the DSN and the VCO by June, and then the the filter and the VCA came came in July, and then I, and then you know after a while I said you know what I'm actually having a lot of fun, and you know if you see my modules actually which are all for HP all similar, mm-hmm. they're meant to be they meant to optimize the speed with which I design new modules, you know, and but at the same time since they have the same front panel and same as you call it properly design language. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh it gets very quick for me to design new modules because I have everything in Kiket libraries and things. But also, it's um, I I just really like the idea of designing new things, new modules. Yeah. And so I start doing that. And and by September, I said, you know, I I said, you know what, I might actually sell something here, just 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 to try. You know, I never sold anything. I'm a software engineer for life, so I, I didn't know what it's like to have customers to sell <laughs> stuff. And also as a character, right? Because I, you know, I tend to, I don't know. I think as a character, I tend to quite like to have a low self-esteem because that's what pushed me to do stuff. And you cannot really do that when you sell something. You need to tell, look, these th- these things are good. So I actually yeah. like the experiment of selling something, and and you know, this is actually, to be honest, is is thankful to to my girlfriend, which is a proper sales <laughs> manager. And so she told me how to how I should behave. I say, no, you cannot say that this stuff is good, but you say if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, you don't sell it. Say, okay. So she she educated me in this, <laughs> and that was good. And yeah, so. Yeah, by September I start selling them, and you know, of course, like I started without any advertisement, with just like you know my my website, which is based on my whole very simple because that's how I like website, and then an Etsy shop, and you know, it took two weeks I think to sell my first module. Great, and two uh, weeks. That's 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 qu- that's rather quick, of course. Well, but you know, without telling anyone, you know, I was no one. No one knew me, right? And I mean, no one really knew me. So, you know, somebody would just see this guy shopping, buying on Etsy with zero sales and zero stuff. But, you know, there are some courageous people that, despite they never heard the name anywhere, they just decide to buy something. And that's how it started. Then the things pick up very quickly. And to be honest, like, I'm still, yeah, I'm still impressed by by the way the sales went after that. It kind of picked up and it's... Uh, it does tell how beautiful the Iraq market is. There's a lot of curious people that want to try something and they want to see, let's live this good. And once you know your reputation starts to increase, and things go well. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. That, that's how it starts. And and yeah, so this is this is the beginning. It was like a really an engineer trying to to survive the lockdown, but I found something that I really really like. And I repeat that the other things about the Iraq world and in general the synthesizer world is it's uh it's something moved by passion and mm-hmm. when people are moved by passion i found that they're usually very nice to interact with of course like you know there are good people and bad people everywhere but like in general it's a very nice environment to interact with mm-hmm. absolutely and i found that and it's very supportive like as well yeah yeah exactly you know and in general like, and people you know people understand you know sometimes you have a bad week at work and you cannot sleep at all and you know some some order gets delayed but people understand that too it's i mean uh, in, you know of course 
I, I, I don't do that anymore because I, I manage it. But at the beginning, you know, especially when it was the first thing, it was it could had some some bit of bumpy rides when I had to reset up the way SL and stuff because everything happened in still the same small room, right? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> the MLG HQ is a small room uh, <laughs> on a <laughs> on a street in Cambridge. So you know, this is where it is. And yeah, it's been great. It's been absolutely one of the best thing. You know, now that the you know we're still not over yet unfortunately as we all know but yeah at least in the uk things tends to be moving a little bit i'm starting to see wow actually what i did had an effect in my real life and has changed my life in a way so i'm kind of happy about it i can imagine but you're you're planning to stay in the uk for the foreseeable future that's not something i will say on record <laughs> a great answer great answer <laughs> so anything could still happen in that regard for uh, mrg uh uh more uh, synthesizer of course yeah Perfect. well mrg is um i so yeah that's more a question about the future like i i mean i think the physical location i i'm not planning to move let let me be clear the physical location doesn't really imply much, essentially, except that probably being in the EU, mm -hmm. I have a bigger market to sell to. <laughs> but the, that's a different no, discussion it, altogether. If we bring Brexit exactly. into it, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> little bit of big red label, say on record on. Anyway, so Handy. yeah, uh, it's a, um, it's a. Uh, no, but like, yes, the future of MRG is, I, I think it's taking, what's strange is taking up a life on its own, right? I, I never did much marketing or much, you know, pushing or like sharing too much on, me, on social media. It's just like people tend to just share what they like and yeah. a few people like what they do and it just happens. So I, I, I am... I, I really like to spend time in MRG and I repeat, I, the, the smart thing that I did at the beginning, if mm -hmm. once, was to optimize the process to design new module, which is what I like about my 4HP line. It's yeah. extremely easy for me to design something and then it will look similar and then I can automatically generate a panel. And I optimize that. Of course, like the problem that I have is the, the, the PCB space is small, so I need to make very simple modules that do exactly one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so this is something that I was thinking about the future. So I have two lines that I'm thinking. The first thing is that the truth is I'm a software engineer. Yeah. Essentially, at the interface between hardware and software. So actual make actually making digital modules is something that is natural to me. And. So I think in the future, and I have already a few models prepared, but I'm not ready to discuss them yet. So no, I, no, no, those are still on the wraps then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have actually a very few, very few prototypes that are very fun. And they're full HP and they're full digital, and I, I'm experimenting with various microcontrollers and other exciting things. But so yeah, I think digital modules will continue on the full HP line, and, and then I'm also thinking of like taking the current modules that I have and making like an expanded version. So, you know, adding feature that they have yeah, uh, and, and making an expanded version, you know, like I have a lot more to say on filters because I like filter design. I, I definitely can make a much better ECO and other, and other filters. And yeah, I think that's something that I'm going to go and do in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much. Is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that typically the, the, the biggest constraint that you are running into when you try to get something into 4HP? Is it, have you struggled with any of the, the modules where you said, okay, well, that was a real challenge to get to fit into 4HP? Or, oh, uh, every single one, except for the <laughs> IDSF. Like, no, seriously, like the way it worked, there are two challenges in making my 4HP. First of all, I repeat, as an act of... As an act of optimization, I created a front, a standard front PCB. So seriously, if in order to make a new module, I, I only have to design one PCB. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the reason it's so it's so homogeneous is just because the front PCB is the same. I can only use it for a LED or a jack or two two slots or a single draw for for a potentiometer. So 
there are two challenges is the first one which is the first one when i design a module is what do i need to remove and i need to remove something you know like think about the vco right it would be so easy to add a um uh, when I had the VCO, of course, like from the 3340, uh, you had naturally out three, three T waves. You got the saw, you got the square, and you got the triangle. And I had to decide what should I put there, right? Mm-hmm. I could, like the 3340, I could just add so much more stuff to it. But then, and that's also what I like about the process. I need to decide what do I want? What kind of module do I want? Should I put linear FM, which is non to zero, so kind of useless? Should I put the sync instead? Is PVM important? Is modulation important? And what so so it's it's a fundamental part, like, you know, mm-hmm. every module, the first thing that happens is I think, okay, what do I want there? And so since at the time, what I wanted was a fundamentally subtractive synthesis. I, I went for, you know, the, the square and the soul because they're the one that has more, more harmonics. Mm-hmm, and, you know, yeah. and, you know, because that's where I wanted to go. I said, I can actually do that. So, yes, I mean, the, there are so much, you know, like uh, every other things. For example, if you see, like in the LPF, I have, so the, the 24 dB fil- low-pass filter, I have, you know, both modulation for poles for for cutoff and um what's the and and peak or yeah. this, this nuts as we call it <laughs> and yeah. and then i have two extra nuts for it because i wanted to make essentially a filter that does just this filter and i can change every parameter to it when i made the lpfa i decided to you know i could add a gain there too right you know i could add a lot of stuff it would be very natural to it but you know the decision there that I needed a, a clean filter that is 24 dB. When I made the LPFA, that was a different beast, right? That was mm-hmm. a yeah. completely different beast. And and I decided, okay, you know what? This is going to be a fun one. And it actually the whole the whole history of the LPFA was I was started with a friend that I made while selling modules. This guy sold my modules, became very good friends, and we entered a discussion one night. It was late at night. <laughs> and <laughs> that's typically when the when the best things happen, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. When you, you should be sleeping. But anyway, so I, it was late at night. We were having this discussion, and he, I think he was being wrong about the TO3 filter, and you know because he believed that you know TO3 filter is you know there's this whole thing about you know the dominant poles. Uh, is it 18 dB? Is it 24? And so first of all, so. We we are talking about something, and you know, I wanted to prove. You know what? I think you can actually make something that sounds pretty acid with mm-hmm. a TT twenty with an OTA based filter. And all this discussion about you know being the diode ladder and all the nonlinearities. Yes, of course, they create a character in the filters. They create some particularly amazing TO three sound, but you can still create. You can still believe in engineering in a way, and you can yeah. still create something acid by using an OTA characters and trying to simulate the position of the dominant poles. Yeah. And so that's how the LPFA started. And so when I did the LPFA, I said, okay, now I want to make a module out of this because the first one just a, a simple modification of the LPF. And I said, you know, now, you know, I, I was just looking at, you know, the TO3 and I have the RD3 from Beringer. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just looking at it. I was playing with it. I said, okay, so this is the control that I need to do this. It's exactly, you know, I want an envelope. And then probably I would like to experiment with the tracking is because if I just put, if I just put, you know, a, a resonance modulation without any, you know, without any resonance CV, essentially, without any attenuator it would be very yeah. hard to control so say, okay you know let's go cut off only so you know i added the gain and then i added an envelope and that's the main playing uh, device the envelope is the main playing device of the lpfa and also the gain which is so this is this is this is what i think like in, a, in order to think a module i need to first decide what do i need to remove and of yeah. course you always find somebody who say why doesn't have that they say yes there's you know, I, it's and this is also what I like. You know, because mm-hmm. when you have some, 
I mean, limitations are not necessarily great, but at least this forced me to think very thoroughly before making a module. And, yeah. I, and I kind of like, because it creates, I need to think, how should I use this? Yeah, and I think that it's it's also a bit about, um, I like the analogy that I've, I'm not even sure who was that, that says, well, if you're designing the actual interface of, of, of your modules, is it's like, um, it's it, it's like sculpting. You you've got you start off with a block of marble, and you then start to remove the things until you get to the point where you want to be. Yeah, I think that's that's a that's a fair that's that's a pretty generic definition for most of the creative process. Like whenever you have a a large space, and you need to get into something real, and you, there's some creative space in it. You need to get into this, and of course, what's beautiful about modules is that then there's engineering. So you know. You need to also have an idea of how to do this, and this becomes particularly challenging in uh, MLG, right? Because in uh, the the PCB space on the back is very small, yeah. And at the big, and you know, it's mostly it's still essentially now I'm changing it, but it's mostly full THT. So I don't have many components. Like you know, the VCO was kind of challenging to put. Uh, well, I mean, I, I used big resistor at the time. I used like the, but like in general, like the 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 major the one of the hardest challenges essentially how to make something with very few ICs and very few components. And mm -hmm. I, I honestly quite like it because it forces me to think about the essential, and and that's and I think you can see that in my modules. They don't try to be too much. They try to be something that you should be able to understand it. Yeah. When you see it, well, it's better when you use it. But you know. No, they they are indeed, and I can I can attest to that. Is that they are very self-explanatory, and the one thing that really, well, what why when this for the people that haven't seen my seen my video yet on on your modules is. Well, once you've got all of them lined up together, uh, they already just invite you to start playing with them. It's not a static set of uh, of modules. They they are meant to be played, um, as opposed yeah. to some others. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's exactly you know because this is what I was going for. You know, I wanted to, you know, I was too tired to spend my life in front of a computer. I needed a knob to turn, and if you have like a full MRG system, you have a lot of knobs. For Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> so where did the name MRG come from? Ah, so this is this is so I as for now I haven't corrected people. Most of the people think that is essentially Mr. G because I highly personalize it because MRG is a full one man in one a small MRG is one man in a one small room activity, right? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> And so people think that my name is Gianluca, and I think it's Mr. G. And I kind of like it, but it's not true. It's uh, so I come from uh, from Apulia in the southeast of Italy, and on this on the beginning of this, you know, hills called Murge. And so you know, when you live abroad, everything from your from your from your home is you miss everything. And also, there's some strong, how can I say, some strong irony behind. The, the characteristic of the, the land that I'm from and the people that I'm from. So yes, it technically stands for Murja synthesizer, where the Murja are the hills where I grew up. And oh, wow, right great. Now. So yeah, but like, you know, I, I just like it, the idea of MRG. And people think it's Mr. G, I don't correct them, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's something that I actually, like, I, I've been starting since when I was a kid. Like, I, I even made a... Well, I'm a software engineer, and I've been a programmer since when I was five. So I, I even made like a small project. Well, it's not that small, actually. Uh, I made a small microkernel OS called Mujahak, which actually had this had this day. So you know, I, I use the name quite a lot in my projects. And oh, nice. when I made yeah. when I made MRG Saint, I didn't expect it to become public, but here I am now. Well, that's great. Well, that was one of my main questions I had written down beforehand because I I was really interested to know the the story behind it. But I I haven't I didn't assume anything that it was Mr. G or something. But now I uh, yeah, but now people I, people do it. And, yeah, in the end, I'm okay with it. It's fine. I mean, that's actually it's, it's quite nice when you put something out and everybody interpret in a way. This is what's beautiful about it. So yeah, no, it's. Uh, 
technically in my in my time it's been smooth just synthesizer but it's it's a it's it's a self yeah it's you know it's hard to explain because it's mostly like a it's a personal inner inner joke so you know it's yeah not many not many people but me should understand it it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's no the most kind of inner joke there's no yeah. way you can enter the club <laughs> That's a, but but that those things need to be there, of course. Uh, just one quick question about the museum: was that the Museo del Sint Marcigiano? Yes. Okay, I'll oh, probably butcher uh, the Italian there, but I did my best. <laughs> so I'm yeah, just going to yeah, share a a, uh, a link in the um, oh, in the companion a, it's channel, a, so people can have a look at a, that as well. It's a great place, and there's Heinbach made a video about that place, which is also it's in English, and I, I would warmly suggest everyone to see it. I'll have a look I will, at that. I will, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I will post the link. It's just great. Oh, that's good. I'm going to have a look at that as well. Yeah, so like that's, when uh, it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, uh, so yes. ben Benji now asks, well, yes. is, is this where the MRG comes from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes. <laughs> let me, let me, let me pull you out of Piano delle Murcia. Wow. <laughs> There you go. So just a second, let me. <laughs> there you go. There Perfect. you go. That's, that's my <laughs> land. <laughs> Great. <laughs> For those of you who are uh, not uh, able to uh, have a look at the companion channel, oh, right. we'd, uh, Gianluca just posted a link to the, uh, uh, to the Moja uh, Plateau images so that's a that's a good that's of course indeed where the mrg name came from um while yes. we're on the subject of the companion channel so if you do have any questions and you don't want to get on stage later on uh, feel free to uh, drop any of your questions into the companion channel and i'll uh, make sure that we uh, touch upon them later on so one thing is of course um as someone uh who has started with your rack around the same time that i did um, what was the what was the the, the most eye opening moment within within synthesizers within modular or being a a Eurorack maker nowadays that you didn't expect up front? Well, I didn't I didn't know anything, so I didn't expect anything. So everything was amazing. What I didn't expect for sure is the scale of the like the amazing number of people that are in it, and also the amazing kind of people that are in it. And I didn't expect such a big, you know, I I admit my ignorance one year and a half ago about the whole synth world. I, I didn't expect that full history of people that have devoted so much time and so much passion to this. And it's, uh, and also I didn't expect that, you know, I could, I could contribute to this world before, you know, like I, I couldn't expect that, but I did. It's it's quite a, an open world. It's very open to everyone. What I what I like about being in the Eurorack is that at least the way I see, there's space for everyone. Like you know, everyone can make his own modules and can you know sell it, send kits, do whatever. And you know, there's also a lot of collaboration. I help other friends do their own modules when they have doubts, and I you know we give each other suggestion. How can you do this? How can you do that? And this is what I really like. I, I mean, it's an incredibly open and open world, and there's so much to do. Like you know, I kind of believed, oh, probably you know, everything has been done, and now it's not. There's so much, and there's so. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of strong opinions which are dangerous from time to time, and I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. But it's a, uh, it's a, it's a really beautiful world, and. The, there's so much to learn, so much to experiment, so much to play with. Oh yeah, and, and so much money to spend. That's <laughs> <laughs> well. The, the only thing that you can then do is start designing them yourselves, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's uh, it's okay. Like it's uh, it's really interesting. I think I I now reached the point where the MRG is a self-sustaining hobby, which is you know a hobby for my synth. And yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a great thing. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. no, the, it's been like a 
I, I really been exploring a lot of stuff, a lot of, even, you know, part of my practice, even selling stuff, dealing with customers, dealing with people, uh, be nice to people that are not nice to you. There's so many things that I, that I experienced that are just great. Okay, way, yeah. yeah. Oh, superb. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And in regards to, if you were to give yourself, if, 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 if you were able to go back a year and a half uh, into the past, what kind of uh, uh, advice would you give your former self before uh, you went? You were you actually embarked on this journey. Don't worry, Sell that's away. a great one, and that's a great uh, that's a great approach. Yeah. Like, I I spent so much time worrying. You know, I was saying, "Oh my God, well, what do I know if this is good enough or not?" Because you know, I was completely new, and you know, I was alone, and I said, "Oh my God, you know, should I do this? Should I not do this?" Should I have the courage to post it on social media to say, hey, hey I did this <laughs> and I didn't. And, you know, the truth is, don't worry. Like, there's space for everyone. And, you know, even if you put something and something say, this is, I don't like this, mm -hmm. that's okay. You're always going to find someone on the internet that doesn't like you. It's Absolutely, part of the, yeah. It's part of the internet. That's what I will tell you. Like, just be, just do things. It's, it's for everyone. And I've been, I honestly found a list a couple of people that I suggested, you know, just, just sell it. If you want to build something, do it. And they've been selling it and building <laughs> it. And this is probably the best thing. This is the best, the best suggestion I would give to myself. I love and that. And, then, and, it, and it, it also transfers into other parts of your life, of course. Don't worry. That's, yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, in other parts, you should be worried. Like, you know, if you decided to, you know, become a gladiator and fight lions in a cage, you should probably be worried. But like yeah. in New York, don't worry, right? <laughs> Yeah, of course. That, that, that's a great nuance there. <laughs> so before I want to open it up for the uh, for the audience for uh, for the open Q and A, I always give people uh, a chance to also ask me a question. So I'm not sure if you have any particular questions for me as well. But uh, yeah, this is your this is your time to uh, ask me the uh, <laughs> the uncomfortable questions that will be recorded. <laughs> If you have them, let's see. No specific question from from you, your site. Pan modules, any plan? Well, I actually, uh, yes, I have been expert. So the question is by Benji on the chat. Pan modules, any plans, and LRM and S. Yeah, so I have been, I have, I have been in general. I think this is this is a bit more generic. I was thinking of like more. So right now I went for the, I, I went for like building. Uh, this is one of the, this is actually a very good question because it's probably the, the future of MRG because right now I've been building. I started, you know, with a classic voice, yeah. and so you know, so sound sources, which is hard at the beginning. I think mostly because people will probably, you know, if you want to sell it, you shouldn't start from sound sources because people don't know you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if if they buy a sound source, they should buy by everyone else. And then I went to, you know, and then you know, I continued with the LPFA, and then the fold, and then the kick. So I'm still like doing sound sources, mm -hmm. but I think like the utility and in general like proper I call them utility modules not because they're attenuated or very simple things I call them utility so I need to remove the notification on my, my oh yeah no worries uh, we don't really hear that oh good but I do <laughs> so <laughs> well yeah so I, I I have a few ideas like I was thinking about uh, I, I I am definitely thinking about you know probably moving towards, I, I have various things I'm moving towards, but yeah, definitely I did have uh, a few prototypes that did panning and other things, but I don't know, like I, I need to kind of decide where, where, where things should go right now. Mm -hmm. in this, so just, this just from my like, understanding, by pan modules, they, uh, you mean panning modules? Think, yeah. Yes, exactly, that's what I think. Is, and LRMS, that would be mid-side, left-right? That's, that's, 
Yeah. But I think they are less. Let's see what they did. Yeah, so this is the this is what I was I was going for. And yeah, I don't know, like the, the plans right now are right now I, I have to, to push a few digital modules first and then I I do have some some other plans, but as you even can see by the ambiguity of my answer, the plans are very <laughs> are very liquid right now. Well and that and that makes sense of course, because on the on the one hand you do have a well a business now to take care of of course as well so you will get yeah. uh quite some quite some orders in nowadays as well yeah exactly so and this is actually why i yes so it's it's quite into this is obviously something that it's well thank you so what's what's interesting about it is that first of all it's not my main business uh, i do have a full-time job right mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm a gs by free time <laughs> full-time activity it's your it's your passion <laughs> project you might say yeah but it takes so you know essentially the moment i finish work i have to look at the daily orders and ship them and prepare or apologize if it's going to be one day late which is problematic <laughs> um, yeah it's 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 very annoying to be late on orders but sometimes it just it just it just slips yeah. but so what i did recently because i repeat like what I, my, my 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 solution to this is there are two ways when you have too many orders either you increase prices or you optimize the process and i went for optimizing the process so nice yeah uh, what i did now is i i start to start switching and i to be honest i, I had such a busy period right now for some time but i have to start selling the kits with placeholder passives so my, my PCB now have pre-soldered only resistor, ceramic capacitor, and diodes, mm -hmm. uh, this, which is the thing that takes most of the time in building, really. Like, you know, that's the huge majority of components. So what you only, when, when you get a kit now, you just need to, you know, get the usual, you know, PCB headers and sockets, the film capacitors, and the uh, you know, the ICs, which are still use THT because, you know, the, one of the problems that you have now, in, and especially when I hit digital, it's going to be hard. And that's why I am waiting yeah. for digital because I'm trying all possible microcontrollers is the, the, the shortage. And interestingly, THT uh, tends to be much less problematic on shortage, at least until now. So I hope it stays like this because you're not, um, when you use THT components, you know, for ICs, for integrated circuits and, and chips, essentially, you're not, with, when you use THT, you're, you're PDIP packages, you're not, you're not a competitor of the big companies that needs to do big electronics on a mass scale. Yeah. So yeah. I, I found it easier to use that. So I decided that in order to survive, to, you know, to make the life easier to me in preparing kits, to the builder, and mm -hmm. to avoid having being because you know once you start doing the SMD soldering, you need to be dependent on whatever stock that is at whoever is going to pre-sold to solder your PCBs. Mm -hmm. And I I honestly feel that as long as like the resistors you you get the decent uh, specs and ceramic capacitors are you know X7R or COG and diodes are well diodes um, especially the simple one that we use. Uh, I can I can rest assured that as long as I select the chips that I use and the the film capacitor that I use in my kits, yeah. I can easily let the people who solder select the passive components for me. So this is where I'm going, and this has been a massive optimization, which has really helped me because it's really good. It's a, it's been a very smart move for me, I think, because now people are I think happier because it's much easier to, to assemble my kits. Yeah, I am happier because it's much easier to assemble my kit, <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 the, I actually, I think, given the cost of my time and the cost of pre-soldering, I, I haven't, he hasn't he hasn't changed the price of my kits at all. So it's just been a win-win for sure. This is yeah. what I'm doing. That's great. So, what has been the, your the only... most uh, most popular uh, module right now? Ah, it's a shocking. Is the I, I I was just looking at that. Uh, is the ADSR for sure? But I didn't expect that. I don't remember selling many ADSRs. But then I look at the numbers. And say, wow, I did sell a lot of ADSR. Uh, That's, I oh, think wow. 
Yeah, I think the yeah because people really like it because you know it's very immediate. I, I I'm actually coming up with a new version now, but the um, the fold has been the fold and the LPFA has been one of the most loved, for sure. I like, can imagine, yeah. Fold, fold and LPFA do warm people hearts, which is beautiful because it's been see. Uh, and they have been the first module when I tried to do something mine, you know. Well, of course, like the LPFA, the, all my modules, I, I really like the way they sound. And I think I did something very different. Now, it's relatively different from what other people that even use the same IC do. And they have some characteristic in the sound, all my MRG modules. But the LPFA is kind of unique. And the fold also is very unique because I the fold was one of the most fun modules to <laughs> well, my final module to design because I, I had to write a lot of software, and then it will calculate the resistor ratio and decided which one to use. And I, I had to reverse a bit the. It, it's essentially so I was inspired by the fold on the booklet 259 uh, uh, timber section. Mm -hmm. And if you, if that, that, that circuit is just beautiful and once you get it you just love the, just the amazing ingenuity behind that at least the way i see it and so but there's there's you know so i didn't want to exactly clone that because he, he uses some very difficult voltages like six volts and stuff yeah and i only have you know i have a small room so i need to use all the same components in all my modules so i only had like Five volt adapters and <laughs> the five volt linear regulator. So I needed to use it in five volts, and I I had to do all the all the things. So you know, I, I I took the time to you know analyze the circuit, then uh, analyze. You write a software to you know I put like all the the system values, and I decided what the curve of the the bucla was. Although there was already a paper that I found after. <laughs> to describe it. <laughs> anyway, You'll always see good. that, right? That the moment you figured yeah, yeah. something out, that someone else already did it. Yeah. No, but it's good because I, I, you know, I could check that my work was right, and then I, I actually wrote a simple piece of software that will, I will give the parameters and will do something similar, and it's, it's, it's a really beautiful piece of engineering. I, I really enjoyed working on the fold, and when I did it, it's, I think it's pretty unique. For many ways, even the way that I only I have full stage fold, but I have like a saturation there, and mm -hmm. and you know I mix the external input, and uh, so on the dry wet I can even use like the dry wet. Normally, you can put another input, and of yeah. course, like I I didn't have space to put a VCA, so I do not have a fold console, a fold control with CV. But the truth is, if you put a VCA before mm -hmm. on the signal. So you can actually use the VCA before, and then you put the input. You can actually control the folding with CV, and yeah, this is and it's really I really like the fact that all the modules where I try to do something original and different are by far the ones that people really like. While the other modules are, they actually been very successful in what they are, which is something simple that do exactly what you expect, but they yeah. have some some quality in the sound. And so, yeah, that's that's what it is. So, um, just just to get back on the on the fold, and this is just me not knowing um, yeah. all of the details, of course. Uh, but I was under the assumption that that was a full analog module, right? Sure, all my modules are full. Analog. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So the yeah. uh, the software that you wrote that was just to emulate so, the the behavior then. No, or... no, the software was to calculate the parameters. Ah, the okay, software. yeah. So, yeah. you know, I just calculate everything and it told me, okay, you need to do this, this, and this, yeah. Ah, then I see, then I see. So, yes, I, I made it, so essentially, like, I took the equation of a, of a staging, uh, what of the folding stage, mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, like, it was, like, in one way. So I reversed the equation and I wrote a software so that I can, it tells me the ratio between two resistors, essentially, and then I, I since I was lazy, I made it search for, like, the best resistor the system that will get that ratio. And <laughs> in the end, this is what I did. And this is why if you actually see the fold, it has some pretty weird values, but it, the computers had it decided them. So who am I to judge them? So you actually did some Monte Carlo optimizations on that or? Uh... 
No, 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 it was not Monte Carlo because it's, uh, you know, Monte Carlo. Yes, I mean, I, 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 it was not that complex, you know. It didn't require some some searching in a huge space. It was just like simple, uh, well, relatively simple, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, first grade equation, I think. Okay. So, but it was it was complicated to get to that equation. But once I got it, instead of me being on my paper and the paper, you know, I'm a programmer, I just saw the program that did that for me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, let them let the machines do the heavy lifting. <laughs> exactly, because I, I am too messy to do hand calculation nowadays. Oh yeah, well that that's something. Uh, use the tools that we have at hand, right? <laughs> exactly. Let let the computer compute, right? Indeed, indeed. Uh, just uh, another question: If there's anyone who wants to uh, join us on stage uh, and ask a question, uh, as always, just raise your hand. Um, if you're unable or unwilling. Uh, again, just use the uh, the companion channel. Um, but I am interested to see, well, just like you, I was a bit surprised to hear that it was the ADSR module that was then the uh, the most popular one. On the, so like, yeah, go on. Well, for, for me, the, um, the assumption might then be just the, well, the sheer size of it, just that you have a full ADSR module in 4HP. That's, of course, also a, well, a thing there. So- there are various things. First of all, was the first module that I put for sale, mm-hmm. so it's been there for longer. Two, what I think it means is that when somebody buy one ADSL, usually it needs a lot of ADSL, so it buys them in bulk. Um, so yes, I usually, you know, usually orders are like three, four ADSL. I don't know, you know, people really like this in a way. Yeah. Uh, but like, I honestly, I need to check that because this was a check that I did. Uh, uh, some long time ago, I should probably check it right now. But I, but yeah. So in general, though, like if I need to, instead of like taking the full details, because you know, yes, they do sell kind of constantly. But I think recently, if I need to see, you know, since I have all these modules, because the SESL was there before many other, I definitely think that the fold and the VCO definitely mm-hmm. are the current one that are going quite a lot. Yeah. And yes, the LPFA and the LPF and but yeah, I think that like yes, when I saw the, the reason I said yes, sir, I said wow, I didn't realize that. But then I realized that in every sale, essentially, I sold always more more than one, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the but yeah, so no, definitely the fold and the VCO and the LPFA is you know it requires someone who really wants to have that kind of filter. Mm-hmm. Which is also very unique. It's strange because you know, once say, oh, okay, it's an acid filter is at three or three. It is not at three or three, but you need to want someone who want to have that kind of filter. And then, the nice thing about it that's up until now, at least that I know, everybody who had it just loved it, which is very absolutely yeah. I can attest to that as well. It's a it's a great thing, and it and it and it does have that acidy sound to yeah. it. And, yeah. Uh, well, and the one thing is, and, and I haven't mentioned this enough. You offer that in yellow, and I think that that's a great. That was a great choice that you did there. <laughs> that is, oh my god, that that was actually a joke originally, because like the yes, I, I repeat, like the this whole this whole filter started with a discussion with a friend, and he was really into acid, and I said, okay, you know, I musically, I I do not really come from electronic music, like mm-hmm. you know, I essentially grew up playing the piano and this and before synthesizer. I start playing the viola, right? So you know, you can see like the the video with which I introduced uh, the MRG synthesizer was a uh, Paganini Capriccio Twenty Four, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that was that that was me and electronic music. Like I I am I am sometimes like when I when I speak with synthesizer people, I say, "Wow, I really don't know anything. I just like to make synthesizer." But I think it's fun enough. As I yeah. said at the beginning, there's space for everyone in your uh, Absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. so, yeah, yeah, this guy was very into acid. And, you know, he started sending me all these pictures about acid yellows and smileys and things and whatever you want to call them. I said, OK, I'm going to make it yellow for you. So I actually sent him yellow. He made a nice video about it. And then I, I put a few of them for sales and people asked me. I said, OK. And then I started making it yellow. I did not expect that, you know. It's It's been a really fun story, actually. Yeah. But this is also how I do things. Like, you know, I, it's very hard for me to separate, you know, my personal story 
and MRG, and that's what's beautiful about. No, but that, that makes it personal. That makes it, yes, and, and that that's one of the beauties within your rack in general as well. Is that you, exactly you you will run into people like yourself that run a one person two person operation, and yes. they throw all of that passion, all of their love, all of their uh, their dreams into that, and so it becomes. A, a a personal uh, and, and a yeah. very specific mo uh, module or a very specific instrument, and then yeah. for for the people like myself who will then consume those modules and will combine them with their own personal tastes, it it it, it, it is the. I think it's the culmination of anything that you might want to say, well, I truly want to personalize my experience of making music or sound design, yes. whatever you want to do with the Eurorack, of course. Yes. And, you know, people tend to, you know, when they like a module from you, they just become your fan, which is it's just, it's just incredible. The only thing is, you know, the only danger of what we said, that, you know, like making a module is extremely personal, is that, then you always need to remember that when you make a module, this is a suggestion to me one year ago, uh, when you make a module, yes, it's very personal, but you're selling to people that have a very strong opinion. So yeah. do not take <laughs> the feedback personal. It is personal, your module, do not take the feedback personal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> so uh, is, I, I is, recognize that, I, yeah. I would suggest to everyone to be just be nice. Well, you know, people put all of themselves, and somebody they just have different idea than you. Absolutely, you know? no. That's, but you know, it's the uh, yeah. internet. You cannot expect that from anyone. Oh yeah, that's and, that, and whether you make YouTube videos like I do, or if you make Eurac modules like you do, yeah, uh, there will always be certain people who don't like what you do. <laughs> uh, but I mean, sometimes they're right. I mean, this is the thing. Like sometimes yeah. you know, people do criticize you, and you say, "Okay, I really hate to admit this." But this guy has actually a point, you know, mm -hmm. that, that this is what's called life. And yeah, but in general, yeah, it's, uh, it's you see, that this, this of being personal is, you know, like, it, it needs to be, you mm -hmm. know, it's not just like, oh, I'm just putting myself out. No, you're putting modules out. It's something that I need Indeed, to be constantly yeah. thinking about it. Good point. Absolutely good point. Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks, Benji, for joining. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we are approaching the uh, the top of the hour again. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So we've already been talking for quite some time now. Um, so um, yeah, let's see. Well, we didn't get any additional questions from the uh, from the audience. Um, so any any any. Uh, so we already talked a bit about what the future will entail for MRG synthesizer. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to see what you can do with your. Uh, software engineering background with uh, with digital uh, modules i'm yeah I'm keeping my fingers yeah. crossed and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something yeah. will come soon so and okay. then yeah it, it, it's 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 been an absolute honor to have you here uh, gianluca so thanks so much thank for you. joining well thank you very much for inviting me like it was it was really nice and thank you very much for the video actually i mean I I was expecting like a video about one or two modules, but like this full blown video was really <laughs> nice. And thank you for the kind word. Yeah, no yeah, worries. Was, I meant was... every word of it. And and the reason why, because I initially thought, well, I'm just going to do uh, maybe uh, one video on this one and one video on that. But then, as I said, when I put all of them together in, uh, so I put them together in the nifty case because I thought, well, this is yeah. this looks really nice together. It's it's nice and compact, and I wanted to mm -hmm. get that point across. And I was just playing around with it for for a couple of uh, for a couple of nights, and I'm like, no, we can't separate these. Yes, right no, now we really we need good. to show them. We should need to show them as a whole, and then make sure that we we spend a bit of time talking about all of them. And I might. So there are a couple of modules where I think, well, I might want to do a bit more of a deep dive into, um, mm -hmm. like for instance, the LPFA, because I think that that's, yeah. that has so much more potential. And the other one I is really indeed- I really like the, the pinging yeah. that you did. I really like the pinging that you did there. Yeah, that, that's something that that's you can really truly fun. do there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I also want to see, uh, as you already suggested, um, go a bit further and deeper into the folds, what you can achieve with yeah. that. So yeah. one, one, one of the next videos I'm going to be working on is the um, FMA 
Beats by Happy Nerding. So it's a frequency modulation uh -huh. aid module. And mm -hmm. what I might want to do is grab the folds and combine that with the FM8 and really start to design really outlandish sounds with that. Um, ah, yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> so if you yeah. then first first fold something and then you start to frequency modulate that again. Uh, oh, it, that's going to be hard. That's, <laughs> it's, it's either going to be horrific or it's going to be beautiful, <laughs> but nothing yeah, in between. Well, or, you know, you can just get an FM out, which is highly, you know, and then see what happens. Yeah, that, 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 that seems a very, no, I really like the idea, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, whole... I'll make sure to do that, yeah. The whole point of folding is to add harmonics and then you modulate that. Ah, that would be fun. Yeah, I really look forward <laughs> to see that, what you can do with it. Yeah, indeed. And then uh, let me just, um, before we sign off, I do need to double check and make sure that we tell everyone what we have in store for next week. So next week we're going to have um, uh, Kilpatrick, Andrew from Kilpatrick on again. So he was um, he was also one of my first guests when I first started. And he's gonna talk about um, how to combine uh, MIDI and, um, and, uh, and external devices with, uh, with Eurorack as well. Um, so that's gonna be a very interesting oh, that's one. That's exciting, yeah. Yeah, that's really great. And then the week mm -hmm. after that we have, oh, now we're talking about the 7th of December, we're going to have Walker from uh, Make Noise and uh, Make Noise Music uh, on the show oh, wow. as well. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a, a busy December. We're yeah. going to have a couple of weeks with uh, more than one show at uh, per week, and then uh, yeah, and then we're going to go okay. into the uh, holiday season, and we're looking forward to that. So again, Jim Luca, thank you so much for your time here. Thank you. Thank you so very, much for everything much. you uh, you do for the community. I really enjoyed this chat. Thank you uh, very much. Yeah, we'll do that again some uh, uh, sometimes in the future. Again, no worries. And yeah, as as I said, uh, everyone who's listening to this uh, either live or uh, from the recording, um, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse. Uh, live from our Discord server. Uh, feel free to uh, to join that if you haven't done so already. If you listen to this recording, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, and also make sure that you uh, check out the companion YouTube channel where you uh, will find a full feature video on the uh, eight MRG modules uh, that, uh, that I reviewed uh, recently. Um, from a On a quick update on the um, on the channel there, I did release another video on Sotonic Synth, a dual VCF um, by the name of Marsupial, and it was a great fun thing to work with. And there's a lot more coming your way there too, so uh, make sure to, uh, to like and subscribe. For now, I would say thanks everyone for listening. Please everyone, we're uh, still in the, uh, in the COVID situation. Make sure that you stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in for our, uh, for our next meeting. See you then. Cheers.